Having trouble finding that special soulmate? Oh, I know. Are you ready to find love? So what do you think your ideal mate is? This I can solve for you. Check out Secrets of Birthdays, The Love and Lust Report at secretsofbirthdays.com. Hello, my soul Nirvanians, and welcome now to Astro 101, Episode 7. We are teaching the zodiac planets. We are teaching the states of consciousness. And last week in Episode 6, I introduced the first two planets, which were the Sun and Mercury. By the way, for those of you just tuning in, you want to start at the beginning of this, which is down at the bottom here, and that is Episode 1, where we go into what we call the state of consciousness, or the states of consciousness. Now we're going to talk about the next planets, but first I want to do a little review. We talked last week about the first and most important planet, which is the planet of awareness known as the sun. Okay, here's my little uh, visual aid this week. Isn't this adorable? Um, I had to use a bowl to, to make a perfect circle, by the way. I had to cheat. I'm not an artist by nature. But uh, the sun, this is the glyph for the sun. And the only thing I want to point out is, is that I think the sun is interesting because remember, it is the focal point of reality, right? So if the sun is in your chart, that is the point in which you see the world. So if your sun is in the third house, you see the world as a communicator, as a message. Everything's a message. Everything has a message. If you see the sun in the fifth house, it's all about, well, really shining your brightest and living from your inner child. But it almost looks like an eyeball. The glyph does. It looks like an eye. It's, it literally is our perception. So I think that's interesting. I hope you found your sun. We're going to talk more about that, by the way. Then we talked about Mercury. Okay. Mercury, this is the glyph for Mercury. Mercury is the ruling planet of Gemini. It stirs the Gemini state of consciousness. Mercury is about putting two things together. It is the duality, right? So what's interesting is putting them in order, you have the sun, which is single, single singularity, singular. <laughs> Remember that cell phone company? So you have singular with the sun, but then Mercury is, okay, no, there's not just one God, there's two. Here's duality, duality of reality, right? So it kind of is interesting on a just a physics perspective, how we go from one to two right away. And remember, the sun is our awareness. Mercury is the intellectual uh, acceptance of our awareness. So it is the translation of spiritual message into physical word form. That's what Mercury is. Then we move on to the third planet, which is Venus. Okay, Venus. Now, Venus is a cool planet, one of my favorite planets. And... Venus, first of all, is the feminine vibration. It's part of, now that we have duality, Mercury, you know, they always say Geminis are bisexual. It's true in a way. I mean, they understand both the male and the female. They are a duality, so to speak. They don't mean to act on it, but they certainly are kind of androgynous, if you know most Geminis. Female Geminis are kind of masculine. Masculine Geminis have a sweet side. Um, but once we get to Venus, now we're dividing just off the feminine vibration. And it is the receiving vibration. It is the yin. Okay, it is the fertile egg. And that's what it's about. It's about creativity. Now, some people think that Venus is creation. Not true. Creation is the sun over here. Creativity is us doing something with it, us getting pregnant with the sun's energy, us creating with what we've already created. So Venus is running with the ball. It is creating something out of what has already existed. So we have our awareness and we have our thought. So I think I'm this. And then Venus goes, yes, you are this. And you're also this, and you're also this, and you're also this. Venus is like the synonym, cinnamon, cinnamon maker. Synonym. There you go. I want to say cinnamon. Synonym maker. It is the metaphor maker. And it is the ruling planet of Libra. Now, a lot of people think that Venus rules Taurus. I disagree. I'll get on to why that is later. Venus is the balancer. Venus is beauty. Venus is creation. And really what Venus is is love. I always say in my horoscopes, Love is the creation vibration. If you want to log into Venus, all you have to do is feel love. You are logging straight into the state of consciousness of Venus when you love, okay? And love forces balance, right? It's hard to love someone that doesn't love you back. You can, it's hard. It's hard to hate, be hated by someone that loves you. Love is always seeking tranquil equality. And that's what Librans do. They seek tranquil equality. Librans rule art, Librans rule justice, Librans rule relationships. All three of those concepts require balance and harmony. Something is not beautiful if it's like not balanced, right? Beauty is always in perfect two eyes, all the teeth, everything all balanced, that's beauty. Even in artwork, that's beauty. Balanced uh, music is beautiful. And justice is balanced, right? You did this, therefore we're gonna do this to equal the equation. 
or also, of course, in relationships. It's the balance between me and you. It's the balance between me and my wife, et cetera, me and my loved one. So Venus is the creation vibration. And if you want to look at it in the spectrum of manifestation, it kind of is as far as our awareness, right? First we are aware. This is my little solar system. First we are aware. Then we have a thought, hey, I'm aware. And then we go to ourselves, hey, what do I want to do with, what do I want to do with that awareness? Let's make something cool. Let's make a cool lifetime out of this. And then we get to Earth. Okay, you are here, here on Earth, okay? Earth is reality. Earth is where we make it into concrete reality. Now, I know I said that Virgo rules reality. That's different. That's the matrix of reality. Earth is, the, in fact, the reality. So here is the awareness, the thought. Now let's create something, and boom, we're on Earth. Now, I believe that Earth is the ruling planet of Taurus. That's my belief. You're not going to find that in any books. I haven't found any books. This is something I've intuited from my higher self. I think every sign gets a planet. We won't go into the history of astrology right now, but basically astrology used to divide all the signs up, which is these planets, okay? Well, actually up to Jupiter. Uh, and as time has gone on, we've started to redistribute them over as we've developed telescopes and whatnot. I believe that Earth is the ruling planet of Taurus. And Taurus is one thing, alive. Taurus is create. Taurus is mother and father Earth. That's what Taurus does. They produce kids and crops and, and you know, chains of... Uh, restaurants and, and children, lots of children. Tauruses are fertile myrtles. And if it's interesting, you look at this, here's Earth, right? And Pluto is death. So look at this. Everything between Earth and Pluto is everything between life and death, basically. And that is the second house and the eighth house in astrology. The second house is the life, is the creation, is the Earth. The eighth house is Pluto, which is death in the final line. And I just find it interesting that the planets fall into that same spectrum. So the Sun, Mercury, and Venus is everything before life before physical form. Again, remember, this perspective is from the soul's perspective. This is not from the perspective of God universe going down. That was a different state of consciousness. So we got our X and we got our Y. So to wrap up, look for two things in your chart. One, Earth. Now, Earth is obvious. Earth is in the center, basically, of your chart. It doesn't go into another sign, just like Tauruses don't really change their moods. They say Tauruses are stubborn. I say they're stable. They don't change. They don't move into another sign. But find your Venus. Your Venus is this glyph right here. And see what side of your chart you love from, that you create from, okay? And where your love stems from. If Venus is in your second house, you love to make things happen. If Venus is in your seventh, you love from through relationships. And we come back next week, we're going to talk about the next planet, which is actually the moon, okay? And we're going to start really getting deep on here. All right, that's all I have for Episode 7 of Astro 101. I hope it was clear. I hope it was concise. Don't forget, post your questions below. I'm here to answer them. That's part of what's being, that's part of what Soul Nirvana is about. And I'll see you next week. Live, love, be. Do you always date the boring person because it's safe? Mm. How come you always date the cheater? Are you always dating someone that tries to boss you around? Really? How come you're always dating your grandpa? Come on, you got father issues. Admit it, this is a video that answers all your questions. We call it Secrets of Birthdays, the love and lust report. When it comes to the secrets of you and love, and you and love, we cover it all. All those sexy secrets are available at Secrets of Birthdays dot com. So